Jesus Podcast in the Rye. It's the end. episode 41 in the Rye podcast with Kurt Fletcher. I'm your host Kurt Fletcher and I have two guests with me. Look at these people. I got Tim Gaither. He's a comedian. He was on episode two. Oh wow. Look at that. This is a... You got your binoculars on. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kurt's fake laugh. Yeah. Because I don't think it's funny. And these are pepperonis that have been in the, uh, in the microwave for a minute minute and a half, depending on the wattage of your microwave. Those are crispy nipples. Very tasty. Speaking of crispy nipples, Kayla Esmond (laughs) is our other guest. She is a comedian. (laughs) Uh, We are in the uh, condo in Wichita right now, which is the absolute best place if there's a tornado, because there's no windows. You can have one more if you want, Kayla. Thank you. Take another crispy nipple. This is a good place in a tornado. Like, we wouldn't have to go anywhere. We could just keep watching TV. We just, yeah, we just chill and watch TV mm-hmm. while everyone else is panicking and grabbing their textbooks to cover their necks. <laughs> well, we're not underground, so why would we be safe? Uh, just because Interior there's no windows. Walls. Yeah. Good call. Because the windows, that's what kills most people in tornadoes, right? The windows? The windows, yeah. I think also, like, interior walls are supposed to be, like, sturdier for uh, tornadoes. That's why you go to, like, a bathroom, too. It's, like, no windows, but also it's, like, usually an interior. Plus, if you're so scared you have to shit, you're already in the bathroom. Ooh, good point. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever seen a tornado in person? Once, yeah. Yeah? I mean, I've seen, I've had lots of tornadoes, like, come past my house, but there was only one that I, like, physically saw. Okay. Um, I've heard a couple go by, but... (laughs) Was that in Texas, or... Uh Yeah, that was driving home from my cousin's graduation. We were, like, driving back through Dallas, and this motherfucker just went on by. There was one that I didn't see, but, like, driving its path, I, like, left the next day after it, and it looked like Godzilla had just come through and just taken just chomps out of out of all these buildings what about you tm uh you know i grew up in kansas so i was so yeah uh well no not necessarily there was there was uh i never actually saw like a twister doing oh, its really? thing yeah um i mean but there's a lot of bad storms and yeah you know people say like tornadoes are near and that kind of stuff my dad almost got killed um in one he like had this uh he was he had this boat shop at the time and and there was this big dumpster and it was like coming at my dad. Oh shit. And he was able to get the door of the garage down in time for it to oh, strike wow. against the thing. So of course my dad's kinda of full of shit about some things, so he could be making up the <laughs> entire story. I wasn't there to see it. But uh, to hear my dad tell it this dumpster was like doing some Annie M shit. And yeah. Then, uh, I always like the feeling uh, before the tornado hits, like how quiet it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that too. I wanted to tell this story before I forget it though. My mom got struck by lightning through the phone when she was eight months pregnant with me. What? Yeah, which is probably what the fuck's wrong with me. That's wild. Yeah. Don't touch my microphone. (laughs) Dude, I I can't wear, I don't know, I'm not saying this has anything to do with it, I don't know, but I can't wear like normal watches. They always stop working on me. Always. Really? Huh. Yeah. Huh. My mama says you just gave me extra charge. <laughs> that it's is the a... shittiest superpower I've ever heard of, but that's, there you go. That's what she says, though. I tell people it just gave him an extra charge. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I've never heard this story before in that punchline. No. I, uh, I got hit by lightning once. Did I ever tell you about that? Uh, really? You ain't gotta tell me. I can look at you and tell you something. <laughs> a twixt with you. Not about a snowstorm. And he got struck by a fucking lightning? Yeah, my car did. Wow. It was, uh, yeah, it was nuts. It was, uh, so everything, like, just, it, it looked like all the snow disappeared. Like, it was a big snowstorm. It looked like all the snow disappeared for, like, a second. Like, just real quick. And then my radio shut off on the car. And it was just the weirdest moment. Like, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? And then I just assumed I got hit by lightning. <laughs> I'm amazed that you can actually get struck by lightning through the phone because I always thought my mom was full of shit about that. Like, she'd be like, 
you got to get out of the back. You can't be on the phone. You'll get struck by lightning. And I'm like, bitch, I can't get struck through my, by lightning through this phone. But apparently I was wrong. Yeah, well, this was like a really small town in Arkansas. And mm. so it struck the, um, what do you call it? The line, I guess, the telephone line that she mm. was on. And she was on it, and they said it knocked her clear across the room, and she smacked against the wall and just figured I was dead, and I wasn't wow. kicking or anything. Oh, wow. And uh, so they went to the hospital, and... You are just taking a nap. Here I sit. <laughs> well, I ain't dead at all. We used to always prank call people, and we would say that we were working for the phone company, and we said, if you answer the phone in the next two minutes, the guy will receive a shock, so please don't answer your phone if it rings. So then we'd call them back to see if they would answer. And if they did, we'd be like, ah! What were the percentages? Like, uh, it was actually <laughs> really high. Like, a lot of them would do it. And then immediately we'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's great. I love that. I love yeah. shit like that. I miss being able to prank people. You can't even do it anymore. Yeah, I tried to because they all have caller ID. Uh -huh. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I and don't, if you I and if you block it or something or do the old star sixty whatever it is so you, they can't see the number, then they just don't answer it. Yeah, that's true. You know, so even Denny's, you know, you call Denny's <laughs> to do a little. I was there when you called Denny's. <clears throat> yeah, and they I've done it before, like by myself, and they they'll call you back. You know. Yeah. I've got too many like, deck collectors on, who call dick. me to answer my fucking phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, like, anytime Biggs called me and he was like, is this Kayla? And I was like, who's this? Because <laughs> I can't be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, it depends. Gonna I can get her for you. Yeah. yeah. No, like, no. No. Well, that's it for this episode, <laughs> you guys. Uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, it was a good time working with you guys in Wichita. I hate it working with you ever. I know. It's, it did kind of suck this week, huh? Like uh, you were fighting yep. all week and no. you are cranky. and No. I was a little cranky Friday night because the crowds were so yeah. freaking dumb. Mm. You were a little cranky baby. Dude, the Fridays, like, I don't, the Friday crowds have just seemed dumb lately. I'm like, what, is it work? Have you coming off, out of the office? It's like, like got your brain yeah. dead? What's happening? Yeah, maybe it's people that are they're working on Zoom now. Maybe maybe mm. it's, that's tiring them out more. I don't know. I don't yeah. want to make excuses for those dumbasses. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. How do you guys feel about tonight's show? Uh, that's Sunday night right now when we're recording this. I think it was. I think like you know, there there, the fact that it was kind of set up weird, like spatially. Because uh, there was like one table right at the very front, in the front and center, and then everybody else was just up against the wall. Yeah, so like and you couldn't see anybody. Yeah, so that was a little odd. But like you know, that aside, I felt I felt decently good about like tonight. Yeah, they, as good uh, as I, for, I ever do. For the you know, size of the crowd, they had some big laughs. Mm. You know, at some of the jokes. So. Yeah, it, you know, to be honest, small crowds, especially if they're sat right, which tonight was not sat yeah. right, but. But they were still a, a good little audience. Yeah. I uh -huh. have some of the most fun uh, on stage uh, in front of some really small crowds. Yes. Mm, yeah. And I always have. Um, because it's just like you're in your living room or something. Uh -huh. and, and if it's not going well or you're not killing, it doesn't matter because there's not enough people there for it to matter. Uh -huh. You know. So when you get huge laughs, it's just fun. And if, especially if they're sat right, you can just fuck with everyone and yeah. yeah you know they can be like i hate to use this word but magical you know <laughs> like yeah. you just really are like man this is freaking awesome you know this is how it's supposed to be all the time and there's a comfort level and and all that and then sometimes it's just let me get through this let yeah. me just push play in my head that's what i call it just push <laughs> play in my head and blah 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 pause where the punchline is you know because that's normally where people laugh and sometimes i'll even tell them that i'll go i'm pausing because normally that's where people laugh <laughs> <laughs> you know otherwise it's just fucking brutal so you just have yeah. to pretend that you know yeah loonies in colorado springs they used to have like some smaller crowds but they were always really good ones yeah yeah yeah, when I, don't I was know if you've first ever done loonies, but it's it's a loonies cool is great. Have you done loonies? Only a one nighter, not not yeah. a full weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's a great room. Um, no, it's cool. I've got family up in Colorado Springs. Like, oh, cool. When cool I was place. when I've I was gone and seen a couple of shows. I was mm -hmm. talking about this a little bit earlier out at the in the bar. Um, when I was starting out, uh, you know, when I was 
trying to move in from featuring to like closing some rooms, um, I, I would drink <laughs> and I would take my 30 and stretch it into like 45 to 50 to an hour sometimes, you know, just by learning where to talk to the crowd and where to come back and, and you know, do your material if the crowd work's not going the way you wanted it to and, you know, you just kind of bookmark it in your head and that's how I learned to do it, small crowds and bars and, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, it made it so much easier to, to drink. But it's funny how you can, like, you can do an hour at, like, a bar and then you go to a comedy club you ain't got that hour. Yeah. yeah. You know, awesome. it's not going to be an hour because there's oh, not going to sure. be all the interaction and all the little shit that happens in a bar that you comment on or whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's just you and that audience and the microphone, and, and it feels different. It's weird. Like, if someone tells you to do that much time at a real club after you've done some bar, you're like, you immediately, you're like, this is not the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, when, I, was, when I was first starting out and I was working at the comedy club in Albuquerque, <clears throat> And only comedians uh, would understand what I just said. My, no, my, it's very uh, true, though. My boss, uh, the owner of the club, he told me, like, he pointed out one of the guys that was working at the club, and he he can pick pinpoint which ones are, like, one-nighter headliners and stuff like that, like, just based on their yeah. material and how they perform and stuff like that. I thought that was interesting because I had no fucking clue what he was talking about. Who was this now? <laughs> this was Russ at last. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody that's got a lot of experience. Yeah. Not only doing it himself, but but watching it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. You can tell. Yeah. You know, I can because watch. Because I had I'd never done a bar gig at that point when he was telling me that, you know. Oh really? And then he started taking me on the road with him a little bit, and then, you know, gave me pointers on how to work bar gigs and stuff. So. I love bars. I love doing I just the diviest goddamn but, bars. Ugh. But hi, Russ. I think you watch this. I don't know, <laughs> but uh. He does sometimes. Yeah. I always like I always liked Russ. I thought he was funny, yeah. especially off stage. Some of the shit he would say. Oh man, we I could fucking fill a whole <laughs> podcast with stories. I'm gonna have him on here pretty soon. Actually, I'm gonna go see him in a couple of weeks. And, yeah, I like he's uh, one of those guys I would like to run into again. Yeah, yeah. I oh, he's a he was a fucking blast to travel with. Like I had so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had some. We, the one time we did uh, we performed at uh, this little theater in Durango, Colorado, and the uh, the guy who set it up was like, he's like, don't talk about the hotel being haunted at all. Like, don't mention ghosts, <laughs> anything. So we didn't do it during our set, but like, you know, before the show started, like we took like a tablecloth and put it on the mic stand, so it looked like a ghost. And, and then after the show, we just got fucking hammered because they bought us a bottle of Cuervo. Uh. And it's like, it's just me and Russ. It's not like a fucking metal band here. <laughs> you know, so we, we were like, well, we got to finish as much as we can because they bought this bottle for us. <laughs> oh, man, we got fucked up. So I kept calling down to the front desk. I don't think desk. I've ever seen you drunk. Oh, I, really? Yeah. Yeah, I kept, I kept calling down to the front desk lady and I kept fucking with her. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was uh, hanging out in the lobby, you know, where that fireplace was at. And she's like, yeah, I was like, I leaned on a candlestick and now I'm in the basement. <laughs> she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, can you get me out of here? She's like, I don't know where you're at. So I called her later on and I was like, yeah, I'm hanging out in my room and the Harlem Globetrotters and some guy and a dog came in and, and then they walked out my friend's room and it's really weird. And she's like, ah, you're just messing with me. <laughs> I think I was telling you that, st- that story earlier. Sometimes front desk people are fun like this... Uh, this one older lady, um, she had a lot of different stories, but I, I like talked to her a little bit. And one night I was smoking pot in my room, and she came, and or she didn't come. The cops came, and they knocked on the door next oh. to my room. Ooh. And I saw them, you know, and I was like, eventually they're gonna realize that smells coming from this room. Mm-hmm. So I took my I took everything that I, I wasn't supposed to have, and went in the bathroom and turned on the shower and just waited it out. And later on, she was like, I wasn't going to tell them. I wasn't going to let them cops in your room. <laughs> they tried to get in there, and I said, no, sir, you're not going to just go in his room like that. I was like, <laughs> I was like, God, her name was Pat. I was like, God bless you, Pat. She's it's like, good looking oh, out. You bet, sugar. I would never let them in your room like that. Why would you be doing in that to them, Stinger? Y'all not to be me. <laughs> I wasn't going to let them in that room. 
Well, she has every right, legal right to keep them out of that room. I want to see a fucking warrant coming to this like, hotel room. He's like, you can't just go in his room like that. He has the do not disturb sign very clearly <laughs> displayed. Yeah. Plus, well, there's a dead hooker under the bed that he doesn't know about. <laughs> well, I don't want nobody to find out about it. <laughs> Where's Killing that? hookers is still illegal in most states. Mm, not as many. Mm, well, it's still... What state was that? Where were you? I was in Missouri, working oh. at Deja Vu Comedy Club. Oh, yeah, I remember that Did one. you ever go to that room? No, I heard about it, though. Man, when I was starting out, it was in Columbia, Missouri, and it was... Good college town. Such a hot little room. Yeah, I was like 23 years old, and uh, it was a two-hour drive to do this contest, and the, it was on a Thursday, and I remember it was this frat boy had brought all these fraternity people mm. with him. And at the end of it, the guy was like, you guys are tied. Do you want to you just split the money? And I was like, fuck no, I want to know who won. And uh, I beat that stupid frat boy. Even with all those stupid friends that he brought. It was like the beginning of my career, and it was like such a good feeling to drive home and be like, yeah. fuck, I think I can really do this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just such a great room. Like, if you couldn't do well in that room, you probably shouldn't do comedy. It was just one of those rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just all kind of went to shit. <laughs> Like, I got older, and the crowd stayed younger, and then, so then all of a sudden, the weekends were the fun shows, and not that Thursday, and then, uh, and then the room just fucking slowly died, for some reason, I don't, you know, I'd have to talk to the owner to find out, but, uh -huh. that was one of those freaking rooms that just started it all, it was uh -huh. awesome, there was a guy named Freddy DeMarco that, that, I've heard stories about yeah, that guy, yeah, he would spit on you when he talked, and you were so scared of him, you didn't even want to wipe your spit off your face. Oh, oh, he was yeah. that guy, you know, you just like letting him spit yeah. all over. My you. spit's not good enough for your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I spit when I talk to you? Oh, I'm a fucking ass all over here. You know, hey, take it easy, friend. I'm sorry, just, but he would. He'd spit on you, and, and you couldn't hardly understand him. And it'd be loud in the club and shit, and. I heard a story about he was a Nazi about the time. Like if you if he told you to do eighteen minutes, you didn't do seventeen and a half. You didn't do nineteen. You did eighteen fucking minutes, and if you didn't, you would hear about it. And the story is that he threw a wad of keys at J. Scott Homan because he had gone over the time. <laughs> he had gone over. He had ran the light. And the the story is that uh, Freddie threw a wad of keys at J. Scott and said, "Lock up when you fucking leave." <laughs> Because he wanted those kids downstairs and drinking, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, every minute that you were on that stage, he felt like you were stealing from him. And in mm. a way, you were, you know. He knew the, the deal. Yeah. And one time, I heard this story. I'm sorry to be hogging this. But he, he told that I'd heard this story about how he, uh, there was this kid who was taking the door money. Mm -hmm. And he was putting, like, a five in the register and a five in his pocket and a five in the register. And eventually, he just started taking it all. Oh. And Freddie, Freddie's watching him the whole time comes over he goes he goes what we're not partners anymore get the fuck out of here because <laughs> for a while he's not even splitting this shit with him yeah <laughs> so anyway wow i don't know if anyone knows pretty marco but he was they do now he's, he's still alive yeah. good dude oh yeah yeah i don't know what, I don't know what he's up to John Reap always said he reminded him of someone who's in like the witness protection program. Yeah. How the fuck did you wind up in Columbia, Missouri? You know, and he just like, he had some hot young girlfriend, I think, at one point. And, and he was like, Yeah, Sylvia here has seen me through thick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> I don't know if her name was Sylvia either, but uh, it goes. With it the story, it fit, yeah. It if she yeah. feels like she should be a, if she's not Sylvia, it doesn't feel right. That's yeah. Like her witness protection name is definitely Sylvia. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Curtis? Oh my God! What else uh, do you want to know? Well, what do you have want you ever to... had to deal with Crazy Booker, Kayla? Or I Crazy don't, Club owner? You know, is there I, any I'm other more... kind? Or... Say what? <laughs> Uh, more, uh, irresponsible. Like I've, my, uh, I think the thing that's happened most often to me is that like I've shown up at a gig that the producer's like, oh, fuck. Right. That was tonight, man. I don't have sound equipment. And you're like, well, you uh, still promised me like 50 bucks, man. I still drove out here. Like I've hung out in somebody's garage in Memphis before. Cause apparently there was like. I showed up for what was supposed to be a show and like half an hour after it was supposed to start, 
uh, I'm hanging out with like the dog that lives there because the people who live there have left. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here with this person's dog and like none of the other comics are there. There's no audience. There's no fucking producer. It's just me and this dog. And I'm like, do I leave? Like, I can't. No, you do what, your what? fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> and then that dog was like, you do your fucking time. Yeah, the dog's like, I'm paying like, good money for that shit. I'm the pod drucer. Dr- ah, oh, fuck. I thought, that, I thought that pun would come out a lot better when I started it out. I had such hopes for that. Uh but no, I, you know, we'll I, I, I've, I've dealt with the occasional crazier booker, but like, I, uh, I'm fairly good at like de-escalating situations, and I'm, I'm laid back enough generally <laughs> that like, I can just let them, let them be crazy for a minute, and I'm like, cool, and then I just go like, text shit about them to my boyfriend yeah, or some yeah, yeah. shit, but like, oh, there's only one time that I had to get like confrontational back, and I told told a dude that I was going to break his arm if he didn't stop touching me, but, like, that was that was so long ago. It's never, like, the... It, it's never good comedians who are, like, s- sexual harassy, like, douchebags. It's always yeah. these, like, uh... It was, you probably knew, I think it was a Tulsa guy, Dave Short? Oh, I know Dave, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. that dude. Fuck Dave Short. He's an asshole. Uh... I, uh, I beat him in this contest <laughs> one good, time. Good, because he's not funny. And I got a trophy, and he asked me for a ride back to Tulsa... I made him sit in the back and put the, <laughs> put the trophy in the front seat. <laughs> He's the only person I've That's ever awesome. actually had an issue with. That I had to be like, dude, I'm gonna fucking break your arm, man. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta back the fuck up. Uh, you are not funny enough to touch my ass, motherfucker. Like, you don't pay enough. You're not funny enough. Get you the fuck out of here. Yeah, better jokes you could get all up in me, but <laughs> you ain't. That's how I ended up with Josh. Is I was like, that man's funny. I'm gonna ruin his life. <laughs> Sweet girl. How long have you been with Josh now? Uh, a little over four years. Long oh. enough that my mom's gotten sneaky, where Who's she doesn't. Sneaky? My mom. Oh, your mom. She she doesn't ask like, when are y'all gonna get married? She goes. So is his family asking when y'all are gonna get married? <laughs> I'm like, no, they don't. They don't, mom. Yeah, they mind their business, <laughs> right? Yeah, people love so when that stuff. I don't know. I'm sure at some fucking point, it, you know, at a certain point, it's like it, the it, we have, you know, a lease together. We've got all these cats together. We're the, I'm the beneficiary on his life insurance, and I know about his allergies. So it's like mm-hmm. at this point, what else is there to do? It's like he's trusted me with with if he dies, I get money, and I know his deadly allergy. And every day he wakes up alive. So there we go. You know what? What? What further commitment do you need? I love we it. We should probably cut this part out. But you ought to think about killing him. <laughs> what you ought to think about. You know, if he ever. Uh, I mean, just on a pragmatic side. If he ever fucks up, you know, it's always an option. Uh, if if my career's ever really just going downhill, and I just need to start renting out comedy clubs and pretending the headline, I. Uh, <laughs> It's it's on the table. Yeah. Thus far, he's more used to me alive. Uh, somebody has to take care of the cats when I'm on the road. How many damn cats you got? Four. 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 Yeah. Well, I yeah. we're a, Four, we're a blended cat many. family. I have two. Josh has two. And so we <laughs> we have four. Blended cat family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do the step cats fight with each other? And they stuff? do. No, they, they make do. porn now. It's like a really popular <laughs> porn genre. I have a joke about how the little girl's always trying to fuck her brothers, but they're step siblings, so it's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with getting turned on my cat feet. I know. Oh, I'll spend all day looking at cat feet. Are you kidding me? Gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting. I drool a lot. It's too much. Uh, is, it, is it hard dating a comedian? No. No. It was it I mean yes and no. It's not it's hard dating some comedians. Uh I'm oh, sure. sure. Like yeah, yeah. there was uh there was a guy that I there was an open micer that like I very briefly dated at the very start. Like he was the reason I started doing comedy cuz I lied to him on a date cuz I thought I was never going to see him again. And I was like, "Oh yeah, I do open <laughs> mics." And like so we went and did this open mic together and he fucking sucked. Oh, and yeah. I was good and like I was good enough. Like I was decent enough for like having just done it and uh you know, and I, then I found, like, the joke, his one good joke that he'd stolen off of YouTube. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that didn't last very long. But he was just some, like, open micro that he doesn't do it anymore. But, no, dating dating another comic that, like, is at your same level as, as long as they're not an asshole, it's 
really nice because like he gets it he understands that i have to go out of town for yeah. periods of time and then he goes out of town for periods of time and it's like that also kind of helps because you you never spend a super long amount of time together you, mm -hmm. every now and then you yeah, it's fucking nice. leave it's nice to get <laughs> get breaks whenever, yeah you know no matter how much you like somebody or love somebody it's nice to get breaks away from them i love Definitely, yeah. like getting to just like sit alone in a car sometimes just to myself you know mm -hmm. yeah i uh my ex-wife was a comedian. And oh, my, really? My last girlfriend was a comedian also. So, I met your last girlfriend. I didn't know your ex-wife was a comedian. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if she still does it or not, but... Uh, she a lesbian? No. Well, I don't know. She could be. I don't know. I don't know, if, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know, know. what jokes are true. I'm just trying to figure out oh, if yeah, I can yeah. fuck my your ex-wife or not. Well, my, okay, my daughter's mom is a lesbian. Okay, so I can fuck yeah. her. Yeah, okay. well... Why do you have to be so nasty? I here? don't know. I don't... I'm just the... Why am I... That's my comic cards. I don't understand why she had to be so crude. <laughs> so gross talking about the cum that I swallow at home. Uh, <laughs> so I hate him. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't have any cum swallowing stories. Yeah. yeah, you don't have any jokes about... Well, you got that one about that old gross guy. Blow low in her mouth. Blow low in her yeah. mouth. It was. It's a true story, and it was. I know so it's really? about you, but you changed it to a sixty-year-old guy. <laughs> it's funny, but no, it was. Uh, it was. It was. It was funny how it escalated. Like it was just this very innocent comment from me, and then it got a little more, you know, like I would, you know, I, the joke is about this. Jesus Christ! Now you're making me do my bit on your dumb on your dumb. You're the one that started talking. So. Yeah. Well, fuck you, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the joke is about how some men ruin it for everyone else, basically, you know, which is the gross shit that they say about women. Like, mm. you know, we were making some innocent comments about this girl being pretty and being a really good singer. And then the next thing you know, this gross old bastard were, that was working with us was like, I'd like to blow a load in her mouth. And we're like, <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> I mean, nobody, you know, I'm like, wow, she's pretty and she can sing. The next guy's like, dude, she's got some great legs. I'd like to blow a load in her face. I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> you know you have yeah, to. Yeah, it you, you have, uncomfortable. You know yeah. she has to be okay with that, right? Like, you can't just. <laughs> uh, there, are girls ever like that? Like, is there, like, one, like, really gross girl? I've heard girls. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I'm that girl. I'm like, I would love to blow... Uh, I've heard girls are way more graphic about it than, than <laughs> dudes are, like, as far as locker room talk I mean, it depends It depends on the person. Like, it, you know, when I, when I was, like, in the youth group down south, no, I was, like, hands down the nastiest person there, but, like... In then when I was group? in youth group back in like show choir back in high school, but then you go and you hang out with a bunch of like, you know, sexually repre repressed musical theater majors in college. And then they're, they're some of the nastiest people you all ever meet. Um, uh -huh. And I took great advantage of that. I had a good time in college with all these <laughs> disgusting, nasty, whorish Baptist girls. That's awesome. <laughs> I sent a lot of girls back to their parents gayer than they came. Oh, really? Yeah. Get your hand above the table, Curtis. <laughs> Both of them? Both of them. Ain't no ambidextrous jerking off in here. <laughs> but I need both hands. I don't. Uh, he, he does not, trust me. I've seen it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Accidentally, but in, in all fairness, you're usually asleep when I do that. Yeah, 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 and it's flaccid usually. That's what I mean, dum dum. Yeah. No matter how hard you work, it's just flaccid. Yeah. Come on, get up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> He's still asleep. He won't know nothing. It's like that scene in The Lion King. It's like, wake up. <laughs> wake up. Oh, it's sad. almost identical. <laughs> it makes me sad. It makes me think of my little boy. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. It's all right. What else, Curtis? <laughs> You're the host of this song. I know. Keep it going. I'm trying. I'm so stoned. Oh, my uh, God. What? Does your mama know about what you do? Yeah. With the drugs and you stuff? You know what my mom's nickname in high school was? The Reefer Queen? I no, it was Spread Eagle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's old Spread Eagle. I guess her name last name wasn't Fletcher. Spread Eagle Fletcher. That no, her nickname was Toker. 
Oh. Actually, I found uh, she even had a little name tag. <laughs> I found it one day, and I was like, what is this about? And she's like, oh, I used to smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> I was the very first person to ever <laughs> offer my mother drugs. Oh, yeah? Blew her mind. I offered her a hit off of a joint one time. She's like, no, thank, but thank you. You're the first person that's ever offered me drugs. And I'm like, you were married to a meth addict, and he never offered, like, not even once. Oh, wow. Rude. Huh. Rude. Yeah. Selfish. Did you ever get high with your mom? Uh, No, but I've given her edibles before. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. To, uh alleviate some pain and that kind of thing yeah mm. yeah my uh my mom's been working at the post office for the last 20 years so she's not allowed to get high but they, she's they gonna retire next that. year you'd feel like that'd be a, a be on, fine huh? new job oh, yeah. to do high you know when yeah. i'm when i'm su- if, you know if if uh god willing i become an old old person all i'm gonna do is sit around and be high and watch like old movies and shit that's all I shit. do now. Oh, shit. <laughs> Probably literally. Change my diaper. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me pudding. Change my diaper and my bowl. Come on. I'm going to need some pudding. <laughs> a diaper change. <laughs> Somebody change the damn channel. Uh, I hope we're friends when we're old. I think we'd be, we'd be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. We'd be really funny to sit in an old folks' home and make fun of people. That would be great. Say some off shit we say. Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder if racism will still be around then. Who? Racism. I racism. hope so. Am I saying that weird? I thought you said raisins. I was like, I don't think raisins are going anywhere. I think raisins are. Yeah, raisins will be around then. Yeah. Solidified yeah. enough in our culture. I'm I thought, you said, I thought you said raisins too. To be honest with you, I'm hmm. like, I hope so. I hope racism's still around. <laughs> and raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Racism and raisins go hand in hand, baby. You get your wish, have some racist raisins on TV. You know, the hit I, show. I think that this country was going in the complete right direction until some people decided that they would benefit from us being racially divided and all that bullshit. It drives me insane. We should probably talk about something else. <laughs> so Kayla lives in L.A. now. That's... Uh, Pretty exciting. She lives there with her boyfriend, Josh Ogle. Yeah. Very funny guy, by the way. Josh is. Yeah, he's super I've, uh, funny. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to be with him if he wasn't. Yeah. No, but like, I. It yeah, he would... seems like such a nice dude too. I don't know he him is. that well, but uh, the times I did interact with him, he is super nice. No, he's like he's the nicest dude. He's the funniest dude. It's one of those things where like all the time I'm like. Dude, I'm like really fucking annoying. Like, how? Why are you doing this? He's like, I don't think you're annoying. And I'm like, well, you're fucking dumb. Like, what's your problem? Holy shit, yeah. Because we've only been with you a few days, and me and Tim are both like, yeah, it's kind of. I know. I fucking. I have to live with me all the time, just hearing my own goddamn voice. Just. I ain't said that about you, Kayla. No, we didn't say that. Saw this asshole who told me. I didn't say anything. Thank you, Tim. I like Kayla. I think she's awesome. Tim and I sit around and talk shit about you, though. That's. That's fine. Yeah. Kurt and I. Kurt and I toyed with the idea of acting like we hated each other and talking shit on each other <laughs> yeah just to see how you would react here's how i would react i would talk shit about both of you with each other yeah, and have yeah. a great fucking time because a- i like i i have this like strange combination of uh you know i was raised if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all so mm-hmm. like you know, I try to be measured with my words, but good fucking God, do I love goddamn gossip. Whenever somebody's like, I want to tell yeah. you something, I'm like, tell it to me. Like, uh-huh. I may not say anything back, but tell me everything you have to say. And I won't ever, t- if, I won't ever tell anybody. That's, that's how you keep getting to hear the good stories. Yeah. But I get all the good stories. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, people are always like, don't tell anybody. I'm like, trust me, I'm going to forget. <laughs> I appreciate you thinking I m- might tell someone, but I'm not going to. It's not my style, and chances are I'll forget, you know. Probably. Yeah. Probably wasn't an interesting <clears throat> enough story to make it through the weed haze, yeah. It's one of my most annoying, one of the most annoying things is when someone goes, you should put this in your act, oh. or, or, or you ought to come down to where I work and get some material. <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand. It's not, you know. I want to do a whole show based on just jokes that people have given me after shows. <laughs> Just to show them how terrible it is. <laughs> just fill a theater and like just do an hour of shitty jokes where people just are like, what the fuck are you doing? Or talk about like and Peggy like... at the fucking 
you know, fluff and fold, you know, <laughs> that nobody knows. Yeah. Just tell a story about some yeah. random broad. <laughs> Peggy, who works down to the fluff and fold, well, what she done the other day was... People are like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? That's my favorite thing about open mics, though, is you get those people that they'll come and they'll be like, so my buddy, my buddy Jerry the other day, and they just start telling you a story you don't give a shit about. Yeah, like I killed at a party the other day. It's like, oh, I love that shit. When they get too specific with something, you Mm -hmm. know, like I've written this book called Zen and the Art of Stand-Up Comedy when I was starting out. If you can Mm -hmm. say something in nine words instead of 13, do that every time. Mm -hmm. And... You know, throughout after you, if you do that for the whole, you know, course of a set, you've cut out like five minutes of complete bullshit yeah. that all does nothing but clog up the yeah. audience member's brain. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's 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 solid comedy advice. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Get out those words. When someone gets too specific or tries to explain something, like the guy we we're talking about talking to tonight, that was you know, I was like, dude, why are you telling me? Why are you using so many big words that you don't need to use? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the guy just... with the pugs? No, the, the, <clears throat> the guy that worked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great dude. I'm not trying to talk crap on him. But... Good. He listens to the podcast. I'll kick your ass, Kurt, right now. <laughs> oh, I love... I love when audience members start to over-explain when you ask them questions. I was dying when that pug <laughs> dude was fucking... <laughs> Tonight at the show, uh, you, you asked if, if uh, anybody had pugs, and one dude was just telling on his wife. He was like, well, they have periods, and I want to get them fixed, but she won't <laughs> let me. I don't. I was, like, standing right next to him, so I'm not sure how much of that you were catching, but, like, he was full-on tattling on his wife. He was like, I want to get them. I want to get them fixed, but she won't let me, and his, like, somebody with him, like, leaned over and was like, shh, at him, and I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the guy that I hung up on. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, when you, when you can do that at the right, when your timing is right with it, it always gets me huge laughs. Yeah, All right, I'm hanging up now, sir. Well, this is already had to say it so many times. The abyss. Yeah, that light, that that room is like a, it's like you're staring into a cave. You know? Uh huh. And then sometimes you'll see people like, oh, hey, there are two people. You know, it's almost like a whale sighting or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tonight was so weird because they just had the four people up front. And I could only see them and the girl sitting to the far left. Mm-hmm. And the door guy was sitting there once in a while. That's the only people I could see. Yeah. So that sucked. Even though I don't make eye contact with anyone anyway. but it's Sometimes, still nice sometimes I feel like eye contact, if it's a crowd that's not super receptive I don't know if bullying is the right word but if you just look them right in the eye you know it's almost like they're like oh that's a person up there and I should respond not like when I'm watching fucking TV yeah yeah, yeah. because think about it when you're when you're watching like uh, comedy on TV how often do you are you laughing out loud you know it's pretty rare that you're actually just like (laughs) you know but in a comedy club you're kind of expected to yeah um and it's a different vibe Mm mhm I, you know, it's something that I'd, like, notice that, like, making eye contact makes a difference, but I, I never really understood why, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Is like, yeah, you're forcing them to acknowledge that you're you're a human being with them having a conversation. Sure. Plus, like, 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 if you make eye contact was, with someone in person, it was they my usually biggest, smile or something, or, yeah, you know. Yeah. No, it was my biggest, like, w- one of the biggest things I had to work on early on is, like, because I had done theater for so long, I just couldn't force myself to make eye contact. I was so trained uh-huh. to not acknowledge that they're there. That I had to, like, I, I had a good solid four or five months where the only thing I was working on was, like, fucking look them in the eye. <laughs> when, when I, yeah, when I, when I hate a crowd, I won't look them in the eye. I'll, mm. look, I'll look over them, you know. Just like if you're talking to somebody that you can't stand, it's hard to look them in the eye. Yeah. You know? Do you, does that make sense to, to people, or am I just an asshole? Where yeah, I why really do you can't... think I always look at your shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I love you, Tinny. Uh, I know. I like I like making eye contact with people when I'm bombing. That's always kind of fun. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like make it awkward. <laughs> I can physically, I I can see. I love being able to see on people's faces because I now like looking at I like looking at the audience a lot, and I love being able to watch just like as specific people 
hate me. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. Cause like, especially when you're doing really well with a crowd, but just like one lady has decided she's like, fuck this dirty whore. It's yeah. like, she's just sitting there mad. I'm like, I love it. Ah, oh, yes. You're my favorite. <laughs> like, yeah. You sustain me. Yeah. That's funny. Well, sometimes, sometimes too, if they're not laughing, I'll look at them. And a lot of times, I hate to sound mean, but sometimes I'll just be sitting there and they're just like, Oh, yeah, there's a lot this, of goobers. They have this, such a stupid look on their face that I'm like, you know what, dude? You don't want them to get your shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Look at him, poor bastard. And then you almost, then, then I'm kind of laughing at them, like, wow, you didn't get that either, huh? You dumb. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, you gotta look at them, especially when I'm in, like, Reno. Dude, oh, sometimes God. I'll Reno's look out, rough, dude. sometimes I'll look out at that crowd and I'm just like, God, the humanity, like yeah, you... and you could see every single person in that. Dude, class. the the thing with the the laugh factory's thing is they they love for the room to be lit up so we can see everyone in there, and uh-huh. it's uncomfortable for me. Yeah, you know, the laugh factory in Vegas isn't that way. Oh, really? Not really, no. But the uh, the other ones, yeah, they're it's a lot more lit up than a lot of clubs. Uh huh. And it's unnerving when I film that special thing, like the. The lights in the room um, were all up, and I really? decided to pretend they weren't. Uh huh. It's fucking weird, though. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like that. All right, well, like we're already done. I like being uh, able to see the first row or two. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Make sure you can see someone at least. When you can see too many people. Yeah. I mean, there's a good balance. Yeah, there's a yeah. balance between like not being able to see anybody and like. Where it's just like completely lights up, and you're like, we might as well be fucking outside. And, and yeah. sometimes you go walk onto a stage, and you're like, man, I mean, the light will be so uh-huh. bright, and you can't see anything except this. That's what a lot of people who, you know, like when people want to do comedy, they don't realize that it's not just getting in front of people. Mm-hmm. When you get a microphone and you've never grabbed one, you have a tendency to want to look at it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like all these little things that no one tells you, like, oh, and there's gonna be a a blinding light in your eyes yeah. and you won't be able to see the audience and if they're not laughing you'll feel like you're dying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just be prepared for that oh. okay it gets hard to breathe sometimes your throat glitches up you'll be okay yeah how much time 10 minutes just 10 old little minutes fuck <laughs> you look down you're like i must be almost done fuck i'm two minutes in all right yeah <laughs> First time I ever got paid to do comedy, I made eight dollars and I didn't get a laugh. I got we split the door and my cut of it was eight bucks at the best of Kansas City on a Tuesday night and uh, I don't think I got a laugh for the first nine minutes of a ten minute set. And it was the first time that I hadn't done well, mm-hmm. you know. Like I'd done it seven or eight times and then it always gone well. So I was just I remember hearing people talk about how hard stand up was and my first seven or eight times went well, so I was like you know, I hear people say <laughs> how hard it is, but I don't know if that applies to me. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I really think this is what I'm supposed to do, you know, and then just, <laughs> boy, did I eat shit. Uh, that was funny. That you know, hubris is so important, though, because that's what, that, it never, that what it keeps ne- you it, going. It never really goes away, yeah. uh-huh. you know. It never really goes away. Well, I mean, it never goes away or you quit, I guess. It's like, yeah. you always have that thing where it's like, you know, no, no, fuck, fuck this audience, like, fuck yeah. that set, no, I, I can do this, I'm alright, I'm fine. Well, what, what was funny about that particular show, it was me and a couple other guys, and Chris Porter was the, oh, head, I like Chris. the, the headliner of it or whatever, and uh, we all went short, every one of us, because no, none of us could get a fucking laugh for shit, uh-huh. and then Brian Burgess came in, he'd already retired at this point, but he'd done comedy for like 15 years, and he went up, with this crowd that none of us can do anything with, mm-hmm. so much to the point that we went short, and the manager was freaking out because he knew Chris was getting ready to close. He's like, Brian, can you please go up and do some time? He's like, all right. And he went up there and just fucking killed. Mm-hmm. And just did something different. And I sat in the back, and I was ready to quit because I'd eaten it so bad. You know, I'm like, fuck this. I've been funny my whole life. I don't need people telling me I'm not funny. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then... And then he went up there and just was masterful, smoking on stage. And yeah. Hey, can I get a cigarette? I left mine in the machine, you know, just fucking. And all of a sudden he was just doing shit that we were all just like, wow. 
Uh-huh. And I thought to myself, well, that's what 15 years gets you. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can't quit yet, you pussy. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, anyway. It's a tricky bitch, stand-up comedy. Oh, my God, yeah, it is. Speaking of, uh, what were we talking about? Tricky bitches. Tricky bitches. Tricky okay, bitches. yeah, we got to end the podcast. It's over 40 minutes already. Uh, Kayla, where can people find you on social medias? Uh, at Kayla Law, K-A-Y-L-A-W-A-A on Twitter. And uh, if you just search Kayla Esmond, K-A-Y-L-A-E-S-M-O-N-D on Instagram, I will pop up. I'm the one with all the cats. Heck yeah. Do you have a website or no? I do. Okay. www.kaylesmond.com. Nice. Real simple. I got the domain. Nobody else fucking <laughs> <laughs> there are not a lot of Kayla husbands out there. Ain't, That's too bad. Ain't but one of you. Say what? Ain't but one of you. That's true. There's actually one other of me, and she breeds pit bulls, but that just does it too. We're the only one. You ever hang out? Do you know where she lives? Uh, no, but I do occasionally stalk her on and this on Instagram because her dogs are really cute. She genuinely does a good job. Good job with those dogs. I like pit bulls. My my boy's first dog is going to be a pit bull. Oh, they're so sweet. They're good. And I'm going to get it as a puppy so it doesn't rip his face off. They're great dogs, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Sure. What about you, Tim? Where can people find you? Uh, I have a website, timgathercomedy.com. It's got all my social media links. I also have a podcast called The Positive Pessimist Podcast. It's on SoundCloud and YouTube, the two places you can find it. It's also on uh, all kinds of other places. But just go to soundcloud.com slash timgather and... Uh, yeah, their same podcast is on uh, YouTube, but it's video and yeah, a lot of good content on there. There's uh, podcasts with comedians, and there I, I I'm a big wrestling fan, so I do one of those every Wednesday, yeah. usually uh, college and international wrestling and uh, comedy clips and shit on there. So I plan on stepping it up a lot. So yeah, nice. I uh, I love the one that you just did with uh, Sam Kennison's brother Bill. Oh yeah, that yeah. was great. Wow. It was you pretty, check that one out. I will check that out. It's pretty interesting. He made me cry yeah. about, uh-huh. about my own brother. And, yeah. Yeah. That was good, though. That Thanks, really man. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. You guys it. have anything you want to plug or anything to my mom and my sister? We just did. We just did plug our plugs. I'll I know plug your mom and your sister. sister. Yeah, you can plug them. They're, they're pluggable. Kurt and I will be in Reno a, uh, August uh, 12th through 15th. 10th through the 15th. 10 through 15th. Yeah, the dates back. So it's yeah Tuesday Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not gonna. I've got some. I've got some plans that I don't feel like talking about right now. But I'm not gonna try to book a lot of stuff for a while. Yeah. I've got other plans. I'm about to do my 2,000th show. That's awesome. Oh, congrats! A couple, uh, couple of days, thank you. Yeah, and it's almost your 20th year in comedy. Or this yeah. is your 20th year. Uh huh. But is it your anniversary coming up soon? Yeah, August 5th. Awesome. Pretty excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. 21, maybe it'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, do you hear me? <laughs> I'm editing that part out. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. That was Kayla and Tim. Uh, also, uh, thanks to John Singleton from Anesthesia for outro music. Uh, go see uh, Anesthesia is doing a CD release party June 26th at the launch pad and Albuquerque. Go check it out. Also, thanks to Jarrett Reddick from Bowling for Soup for intro music. Uh, they've got a new video out with uh, Hanson. They did a song with Hanson, and it's a fucking cool video, so go check that out. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>